today we're sitting down with Amin Bartram, the CEO of Triple Byte. He went from being rejected from every college he applied to, and after college, being rejected from every job interview, simply because he didn't go to the right schools. That, my friends, is a form of credentialism. He went from that background to becoming an early engineer at Twitch, which sold to Amazon for more than a billion dollars. And now, he's been working on a company called Triple Byte. Triple Byte is a website where any engineer can go and take a skills assessment. That was a lot like the one that got Amon his first job at Twitch. Let's go check it out. Hey guys, today we're sitting down with Amon Bartram, the CEO and co-founder of Triple Byte. Amon, thank you so much for hanging out here. Thank you, Gary. It's uh, great to be here. Why did you start this and how did you get started in Silicon Valley? Those things are very connected for me. My background as a software engineer is um, self-taught, like a lot of people. Um, I started programming you know, when I was a teenager and kind of got involved with game programming and you know, demo scene online. Yeah, and, and, demo and, scene, and that's forums. awesome. Yeah. Being into computers when we were young, that's like winning the lottery ticket and not even really understanding yeah. that. I didn't understand it. Uh, my parents didn't understand it. And I remember my, my parents sitting me down and saying, you know, you know Amin, we, we like that you're interested in this, but we think you're spending too much time yeah. programming. We're worried about you. <laughs> We're worried about you. I Why got you, that too, yeah. We need you to study some like, life skills, useful. <laughs> yeah. Turns out um, this is the most useful thing yeah, that you could possibly yeah. be into. That's where the connection back to Trill Byte for me. There's this hurdle. To actually get a good job, credentials end up playing a, a pretty large role. Um, and so, you know, I was self-taught. Um, I was actually homeschooled, uh, so I wasn't going to school. So I, I was being taught by my parents and spending all my time, you know, reading and teaching myself. That was a great childhood. I, I, I loved it, but it made it very hard for me to, to, get, to get into university. Totally. Um, I had just none of the background, you know, all I had was my parents. And that was, I think, my first encounter with kind of credentials and the role that, that played was, was trying to get into college. Uh, the first year I applied to colleges, I'm embarrassed to say I, I was rejected from every school I applied to <laughs> and couldn't go to college. <laughs> Um, which, yeah, that was pretty. That was that was hard to take. Yeah, at, definitely. At, you know, Eighteen years old, to, I had to kind of work really hard and, and apply to a bunch of the kind of least selective schools, and I actually got in. So um, I, I went to a to a you know very low ranked school in in New York, New York State. Um, and I did well. I really enjoyed school. Even at lower ranked schools, they're really smart people. Like the professors were, you know, they're they're really passionate about their areas. Um, I, I, I you know took programming courses. You probably got amazing, very direct access to the best professors that way. Yeah. And actually, the CS department at my school, I think, had a total of 22 students enrolled at the time. Many of my classes were, you know, five students. And so yeah. I had great access to the professors. My experience became much, much worse when I graduated. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember uh, my school had a career fair. I think the only, the only company attending that had any claim to be a tech company was a sort of outsourced tech support, you know, call center <laughs> that was located in So the big the guys area. didn't show up. The, you know, the Microsofts and the Googles didn't I, show up. I don't believe up. there was a single company hiring engineers at, at the career fair. You know, they were hiring tech support people to get in the phone and help people fix their computers. Um, and so, yet there were very smart people, you, yeah. your classmates, yeah. who were very skilled, yeah. who and, could and, program anything. Yeah. And many of whom, you know, I, so I, you know, I, I have a, a, you know, this career in Silicon Valley and some of my classmates I know work, work at, at NASA and other startups. So the credentialing um, system is actually failing people. It is. What really hit that home for me was, was my job search process. You know, so post-graduating, I was then, I had to get a job and I you know, went home living in my parents' attic and applying to companies, and it, just for months, you know, I would send out resume after resume, just not hear back. Yeah, because you know, my resume, it, it, it didn't look very good. Right? Right. All, all I had, I had four years out of school that no one had heard of, that's a filter that people use. This credentialing process is just clearly broken in yeah. some fundamental yeah. way for yeah. really smart people. What's so insidious about it is that it's not irrational, right? So that, you know, the flip side of this is I eventually got lucky and, and you know, I got a job at, at Twitch when it was a small startup. It was then called uh, Justin, Justin.tv. I got a role there because they were small enough to not really have a team of recruiters and have an application process, and they had, they had a programming challenge. Yeah. You could do their challenge, and if you completed the challenge, they would interview you. If and, you were um, great, you're great. So I solved that. Two weeks later, I got this sort of one-line email from, from a, the intern there actually inviting me into interview. Um, I just got the job, kind of put in the door. What really paints the whole picture for me is kind of actually what I experienced next. Right? Once I was employed there, pretty quickly I was leading a team and hiring people under me, experiencing the flip side, right? And realizing that it's easy to say credentials are, 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 are stupid, people shouldn't look at them, but 
when you're hiring, it's more complicated than that. It, it's really expensive for your team to bring somebody in. Credentials do correlate, right? What's so insidious about this problem is that right. you're trying to skip ahead because before triple byte, before an objective measure that's run by software, there wasn't really a scalable way to create this credential yeah. period. Your recruiter, your recruiter or hiring manager, you're hiring for your team, and flying from an in, you bring them for you know eight hours of engineering time, whatever it is, is extremely expensive. And you, you feel terrible if you bring somebody in and they do poorly. Given those incentives, there's a reason. Like people, people with fa you know, fancy degrees and, and, and internships and, and past experience at big companies as a group are better. Right? It doesn't mean something to have an MIT degree. It's really hard to get into MIT. World-class professors, great, great, great classmates. It's a great place. You know, that means something. The problem is that only a tiny fraction of people have gone to MIT. Yes, it means something, but the vast majority of, 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 of programmers in the United States don't have those credentials. And so if you have a process that just rules them out, missing tons of people, yeah. right? it's a really high false negative rate. Contrast this with what the biggest tech companies constantly say, we can't hire yeah. enough smart people. Yeah. There, we, there aren't enough smart people out there. This is just clearly false then. Yes, there is, there is a large pool of people who are being passed over. And my God, the problem compounds. Right? So I, I like thinking about my trajectory. I, I was extremely lucky and it was blind luck. The, the only job offer I got was at this, this tiny startup I hadn't heard of Y Combinator. I didn't know much about the startup space. I got this job, and that company ended up growing into Twitch. So now I have this awesome resume. You know, early early engineer at Twitch, responsible for you know you know critical systems there early on. Um, what a ride! But had I received an offer from CVS corporate to work on their you know employee management systems and wherever CVS is located, I'm, I'm sure that <laughs> but I would have taken that. I needed yeah. a job, and I would have taken that, and I would have poured myself into it, and I would have probably done a good job. But the result would then would have been that my resume would have shown, you know, degree from no-name school and then, you know, three, four years working at CVS corporate. I can tell you from working at Trillbyte, that resume actually looks worse than, you know, that resume is absolutely going to be right. ignored by, by, by nearly every recruiting team at top tech companies. And so the problem compounds. And there is a real signal there. It's not irrational, yeah. but... People get tracked. People get tracked. Such, People get tracked, yeah. yeah. They get tracked and they get trapped, actually, by that tracking. It, there's, I guess society has this yeah. great sort. And of course, it correlates with a lot, of, um, a lot of ugly things, right? So, socioeconomic status, race, gender. If your you know, parents can't support you through college. Yeah, totally. It's, These it's, are it's, real it's, things. It's, it's that much more likely that you drop out and don't have that credential and right. kind of go down, that, go down that track where you're then uh, trapped. Yeah. What drew me to Trillbyte, what, what, what led me to, to start this company, was um, this problem. Having seen both sides of it, it's relatively obvious what the solution is, right? This, this is a data problem. Right? We know how to solve data problems. The solution to come up with it is to directly measure the skills and create a process, a test, an assessment, identify skill wherever it lies. And so we basically set out with that as the founding idea of Trillbyte. You know, we were going to um, conduct lots of interviews, gather data, and build a process that is fairer and more accurate and open to people from, from all sorts of backgrounds. And that's what you've done now. How many people have gone through uh, the triple byte assessment at this point. Some, somewhere around 200,000 folks have gone through the assessment. Cool. And what's awesome about that is, again, this is a data problem. And so the, the, more, the more data we have, the more, you know, the more accurate we can make the assessment. Fundamentally, we're in the business of classifying humans. And that is a impossibly hard thing to do. Right? Human potential is, is incredibly complicated. Yeah. And the key observation is that we're competing against teams of people who are just making gut calls. Right. Right? And the actual research on that shows that it's pretty close to random. We are still very far from perfect, but our process is... It's debuggable. Yeah. When there's a problem in our process, we can go in and say, oh, like this, this was incorrect. We're going to change our model to fix this problem. Yeah. Um, and it gets better over time as, as more candidates and more companies yeah, use our, our, our product. And this is separate from the AI efforts that some of the bigger companies like Amazon have done. You're not, you're not using past data or past resumes or past background to predict whether or not someone will actually get hired simply because that's institutionalizing basically the biases of the yeah. past. So this is actually about skills, not background, not resume. Yes. Uh, that's, I think it's a really important point, point to make about kind of the traps that you can fall into here. So if you have to be careful, training on past data runs this risk of, of navel gazing, of doing all this work to just explain exactly in what way this previous system was, was inaccurate or biased. A number of, of efforts have been made to do kind of large-scale data science back predictive modeling on top of resumes. You look at those, those projects, they, they tend to fail, and they tend to fail just because the signal fundamentally isn't there. A core result from kind of the rise of AI and machine learning, better data tends to trump better modeling. If, you, if, if your data is noisy and bad, you can hire the best machine learning people in the world and build the most sophisticated models, and you're going to have limited success. 
if you have high quality, accurate data, um, especially labeled data, where you can do a kind of a supervised ML method, simpler models with, 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 with access to the high quality data are likely to be more sophisticated models with, with, with worse data. And so our approach here is really all about building the best data set. Yeah. You're, you're very focused on this more fair credential. Triplebyte is just a different beast, right? We find people who have few other options and we get them, we get them jobs where they earn, you know, three, four, five X the salary they've earned in the past. Yeah. Right? We, are, we, we are changing people's lives. It's extremely rewarding and extremely exciting. Yeah. I mean, the Triple Byte blog is full of incredible stories yeah. of people yeah. who, you know, they were working on an oil rig or they were working in fast food yeah. and they had a kid and how do you actually support them? Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, in their spare time, they learned to code. They loved writing software. They loved making, uh, they, they loved being an engineer and they had all the skills to do it. Yeah. One early on that I have in my, in my mind from the early days, somebody who was working in a warehouse, um, their job involved uh, driving a forklift around the warehouse. They had learned to program online and never met another programmer in person. Oh, wow. <laughs> and so this person showed up for their, for, 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 their, for their interview at Instacart, I believe. The first face-to-face -face interaction they ever had with another, another programmer. Um, but, you know, they had the skills and they got the job. And they're here in San Francisco now? They're in San Francisco, yeah. That's incredible. So we talked a lot about the candidate side. What about the hiring side? We know a lot of people say that they can't hire enough people. This must be transformative for them as well. Yeah, it is. Hiring is one of the biggest problems that every company faces, you know, startups early on, but as, as you get bigger, like hiring the best people is just existentially important for every company. And people spend a lot of time. They spend a lot of time and a lot of money. Yeah. One of the stats that I'm most proud of, candidates who companies source with Trillbyte and interview go on to pass those interviews at about twice the rate of candidates who they, who they bring in and source via their other channels. So um, right there, you're basically cutting in half the amount of time you have yes. to spend on on-sites. Yes. Which yes. Of, and the only people who can do those on-sites are actually your best engineers. And so that, that's, that's, that's a huge time save. Um, it's a huge you know, money save. Um, it's a huge attention save. Engineers dislike interviewing. And they especially just like interviewing people who, who, who don't do well. I'm really excited about this from a business perspective. Um, we've been able to help some of our clients significantly grow their engineering teams. And I think this is a pretty massive opportunity, um, especially as kind of software reach the world, right? So software reach the world means that more and more businesses need to hire software engineers. At Initialize, we have a thesis that you look at the overall GDP, so all products and all transactions in the world, and you can look at that pie chart. And uh, only a fraction of that pie chart is actually being driven by software right now. And you're seeing Airbnb in housing, you're seeing Uber in transportation. Uh, bit by bit, larger and larger parts of that GDP will be taken over by software. And who is there except software engineers to actually build that? So they're truly the limiting reagent on the future of all of business. Yeah, and there aren't enough currently, right? Uh, that's the, there, you know there aren't enough software engineers accessible to companies, and then I think it's why it's so important to look for the skills directly, just from a business perspective, right? I, I've talked a lot about why it's socially important, and that's that's the mission. That that's what drives. That's what motivates me. But it's also just important for the economy. Um, you know, as as software reaches the world, what that means is that you know grocery store chains need to hire software engineers. Right. If, if you're a medium-sized grocery store chain in, in Illinois, you have to compete with, you know, with, with Walmart. Yeah, that's our and, whole thesis for yeah. investing in both Instacart and standard cognition. Exactly. We, we kind of view our role there as making it possible for those little guys to compete. And that's where we've seen a lot of growth recently, is kind of moving out of just the core Dropbox, Stripe tech companies into helping sort of the rest of the economy compete. What is it that... Dropbox or Airbnb can do in terms of hiring software engineers that you know, incumbents that are not tech companies, they just get wrong. I think the number one thing is that they are currently employ software engineers. So for, you know, we've talked a lot about, about, yeah. about credentialism, yeah. and credentialism is a problem, but at least at Dropbox or Stripe, there is a deep pool of talent. You know, once you get through the problem of the credential process, there's an interviewer there who can identify actual talent. Um, and the problem we see at non-tech companies trying to run in that space is that they really don't know what to do. And so often they fall back on purely credentialism. Yeah. We see that problem with early stage startups all the time. You have a non-technical co-founder yeah. yeah. who cannot evaluate yes. their technical yes. co-founder. And so they just fall back on credentials and say, okay, we're going to hire someone who has a degree from, in, in yeah. CS from a well-known school. They're like, Stanford, and, Google, yeah. Stanford, Google. And that misses. So I said earlier that degrees do mean something and correlate, and that's true. But there's also false positives. <laughs> Hate to say it, but... People who are not very good programmers sometimes get degrees from Stanford and MIT. I went to Stanford and yeah. there are some people who are totally brilliant and some people yeah. 
I, I think what we're doing is really important for the economy. And our vision actually is broader than software engineering. Software engineering is a $100 billion market. And so this is where we're pretty laser focused right now. But the social impact of skills assessment is profound, runs far deeper than software engineering, right? This problem of credentialing is, is rampant. Like, look at how teachers are hired. Look how lawyers are hired. Lawyers are hired, as far as I can tell, 100% on credentials. If you don't go to a top law school, you simply do not have access to top law, you know, jobs. Our vision is skills assessment, background blind skills assessment, kind of killing credentialism. And you know, our goal in a 10 year time frame is to help everyone hire in this way that's, that's open, that's fair, and that lets people move upward from whatever their background, you know, get jobs based on their skills. That sounds like the biggest idea that actually exists. Billions of people who have been tracked since they were 15, 16, yeah. you know, tracked and then trapped. It's profound. It is profoundly important. Well, thank you for doing this good work, man. This really important work, honestly. Thank you.